Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Audio Boom Group PLC investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged, they can be submitted at any time via the QA tab that's just situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. And these will be available via your Investor Meet company dashboard. Uh, before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll. And I'll now like to hand you over to the executive management team from Audio Boom Group PLC. Uh, Stuart, Brad, good afternoon. Thank you, Jake. Um, welcome, everyone, to our Q3 update um positive update today in terms of the the future of this 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 business audio boom is in a a, a strong place moving forward and we're pleased to present uh the business to you today we will uh we'll do this in a, a slightly different order to to what many of you may be uh used to seeing um first of all we'll dive right in we'll take a look at the financial performance the operational performance so far in, in 2023 and how we're building for the future and how we expect Q4 of, of this year uh, to be in a very positive place. And, and of course, uh, as you'll have seen in today's trading update, we really focus on that record revenue in, in 2024. After that, we will uh, we'll step back a little bit. We'll recap the business model, uh, talk about the, the, the company and, and, uh, and the industry and the, the space that we're operating in for those of you that might be new to Audio Boom and the podcast space. And then uh, after that, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the future focus areas that we're, we're focused on, on building this, this business around and, and, and that what we're expecting uh, through 2024 and beyond. And then at the end, uh, we will do that Q&A. So get any questions in that you have now. We have a few questions that were, were submitted ahead of time on the Investor Meets platform. We'll answer those uh, and, and plenty of time, hopefully, at the end to answer a, a few more that, that you submit today. So. We'll get into things in, in just a second, but uh, as a way of uh, introduction for, again, any of you that are, are new to Audio Boom, uh, a quick intro for myself and Brad. I'm Stuart Last. I'm the CEO of Audio Boom. Um, I have been CEO for, for the past four years and have uh, have managed the, the company through a very strong period of, of, of growth and, and success. Uh, I've been at Audio Boom, though, for, for 10 years, uh, leading out the, the US growth of the business since 2014 and 2015, and previously uh, at at the BBC, um, driving their digital audio uh, and, and radio business uh, when I was based back uh, in London before coming here to New York. But very excited about the future, um, very positive about where this, this business is going and, and very pleased to, to be uh, leading the company forward. Thanks, Joe. Hi, everyone. I'm Brad Clark, CFO here at Audio Boom. I have been here since March 2018, so coming up for six years. Um, chartered accountant with over 15 years of experience of financial roles at um, media organizations prior to Audio Boom um, at News UK, another AIM quoted company called Brave Bison. Um, I'll be back a little bit later on to take you through some updates on revenue, um, OPEX, working capital, and cash. So I will speak to you shortly. Thank you, Brad. All right, so let's uh, jump into the, the performance and operational update. As, as I said, we'll get to that, uh, the look at the model a little bit later. Uh, many of you, I think, will have uh, seen these numbers from today's uh, trading update that looked uh, at Q3 and our year-to-date performance. So I'll walk you through those, and then we'll go a little deeper on some of the, the key points here. Um, so year-to-date uh, through to the end of September, uh, Audio Boom delivered $45.8 million of revenue. Uh, as you'll see here, that's down on our position at, at this point last year, uh, but up significantly on, on, on the previous year. That uh, that that, uh, that that slide back uh, in the year-to-date revenue is due to two key factors, two key factors that we've talked about a lot in these presentations over, over the past year. The first one is that advertising market weakness. So in, uh, in early 2022, we saw a deterioration of the ad market, um, and that ad market weakness has continued through 2023. Um, and we think that the ad market weakness has impacted our revenue by around 20% this year so far. The second uh, key point in, in that drop in revenue uh, is the loss of the Morbid podcast from the Audio Boom Network. That's a very large, very successful podcast that we worked with for a number of years. 
and that, uh, that, that podcast contributed revenue last year uh, until it left the network uh, midway through the year. Um, and, uh, and that has obviously led to uh, a, a drop in revenues. Also, Morbid is a, a top five podcast in the world. So a, a massive podcast with a huge audience and, and strong revenue attached to it uh, while we were working with that show. So those are the, the two kind of key factor in, in that revenue drop. And we'll talk uh, about the improvements that we're making to deliver maximum re revenue going forward in just a moment. In terms of uh, and profitability, our adjusted EBITDA number uh, year to date through the end of September is a loss of $1.7 million. So we've uh, moved into a loss making territory off the back of uh, that ad market uh, impact on, on revenue. So EBITDA is, is being impacted by, by two key factors here. Firstly, the, uh, the ad market impact um, lower revenue uh, you know, allows us to uh, push through less to, to that EBITDA line uh, and that's been key in this first nine months but the second uh, the second point here as well is impacting negatively EBITDA and that is uh, partner minimum guarantee payment so as you know to sign the top tier uh, podcasts in the world uh, we create a, a partnership package for them some of those involve a minimum guarantee we have to pay that partner that creator a minimum amount um, and when revenue is low and when revenue is impacted by this weaker ad market we have to still pay that creator their minimum guarantee and we have continued to do that unlike uh, several of our competitors in the space who have been unable to continue to pay their, their, their talent uh, we have continued to invest and, and, and pay uh, our minimum guarantee obligations, and that has a direct impact on on that EBITDA line. And again, we'll go into that in a little more detail, and I'll show you how uh, we move away from that minimum guarantee exposure over the next few months. Uh, one key point here, and Brad will will go deeper on on this one on an upcoming slide. But I think it's just worth saying that we have really great cost controls within this business. We are continuing to be a very uh, lean company, uh, and our year to date operational uh, expenditure of seven point nine million is down ten percent on the previous year. So we have a really good handle on that, despite all the inflationary pressures that are around right now. Uh, we continue to to operate in a very lean, very controlled um, manner there too. Last uh, last kind of key number here is the $3 million cash number um, at the uh, end of September. We have since collected more than $2 million um, since uh, since that. So uh, we continue to, to collect well. Uh, we utilized a million dollars of cash in Q3 for advanced payments to our, our top tier podcast as a contract at advanced payments. And those are then recoupable against their, their revenue over the, the course of their contract. So um, we've seen some cash burn there, um, a, a significant amount of that due to uh, those upfront cash payments uh, to podcasters, which is then recoupable. And just as a reminder, we do have access to another $1.8 million um, of, of cash uh, through an overdraft facility that we've had for the past few years and has continued to, to be untouched to this to, to this point. So um, those are the numbers. Um, I think, you know, we have... Um, We've had a challenging year uh, at, at the company because of that ad market weakness and those minimum guarantee obligations that, that we're contracted to. But I think today is really a uh, about drawing a line in that and focusing on, on, on the future of this business, which is in a strong place because of the operational improvements that I'm going to walk you through in, in, in just a moment. Um, to go a little deeper on that, that revenue, um, this slide, I, I think, helps uh, helps you you get a view on that we have our three advertising products our premium uh, ad product which is where the, the host of the podcast uh, delivers the advertising uh, in their voice and they endorse the products that's a, a very premium product uh, we have showcase which is our ad tech uh, delivered advertising business very efficient very scalable and can and is now delivering huge volume and then we have our sonic uh, uh, business, which is our creative um, agency business that works directly with brands around their advertising. So here you can see uh, that the progress of, of, of those revenue lines. Um, our premium business now makes up uh, much less of, of our overall revenue, 58% uh, year to date in 2023, down from 71% last year. Um, showcase is the fastest growing part of our business. We'll talk about that a lot more. 
um, as we go through this presentation, but Showcase has grown 30% year on year and is a really, uh, a really strong part of our business. And we expect Showcase to continue to grow strongly going forward. And then Sonic is now makes up 19% of our of our revenue, albeit with that that smaller revenue share between uh, between Sonic and uh, and its and its brands. And just to go a little deeper on on that revenue share, uh, you, you can see the revenue shares here: um, pre Premium at 22%, Showcase at 41%, and Sonic at 15%. Um, combined and, and, and across the business, that gives us a, a group revenue share of, of 24%. Uh, and that's a vast improvement over last year at, at 20%. Now, that's the kind of contracted on paper revenue share at 24%. We will talk about how we've improved that a little later in the presentation. But I think key point here, just to go back to, to the previous slide and the numbers on there, is that 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 24% revenue share that is impacted by those minimum guarantee obligations. So we continue to have to pay those uh, those partners, even if we are not delivering on the uh, high enough revenue to take care of those minimum guarantee obligations, we still have to pay those. And that reduces that revenue share down, effectively creating a gross margin of around 14% for this year so that's the, the key impact on on gross margin and then ebitda is those minimum guarantee obligations that that, that we continue to pay i just wanted to talk to you really uh you know uh, about the state of the advertising market and a state uh, the state of, of the business so some you know not, not an exciting slide this one but some key points on here just to walk you through i think that the first one is that the ad market does remain challenging um we had very weak demand in in early summer uh unexpected weak demand in early summer we were seeing some pickup in in, in the advertising space as, as we got through the spring but but certainly weak demand with Ju july as being uh, a low point for for revenue Revenue. Now we have since seen month on re month revenue growth since July. So August was was higher revenue than July, uh, September higher than August, and October already ahead of September. So we're seeing good sequential um, revenue growth. July does uh, appear to be very much the, the low point for, for, for revenue, and we are taking things forward from there. Um, the operational improvements that I've, I'll talk to you about in just a moment will result in, in strong Q4 performance. And as I said, October is already trending ahead of, of previous months for, for revenue. And Q4, uh, we will get back to year over year revenue growth as well. So currently we have $18 million of revenue booked for Q4. Uh, we've talked uh, in our trading update today about going beyond 19 million. That will be back to uh, year to year growth. Obviously, that will be uh, sequential quarterly growth uh, as well. And I think the key point here is that will be the strongest revenue quarter since the ad market downturn. So the strongest revenue quarter in Q4 since early 2022. Um, and that will be you know, I think for me, a clear sign that the operational improvements that we have, have put in place uh, are starting to, to kind of pay dividends and starting to, to get this business back in the right direction. And, uh, Q4 and uh, next year, 2024, we, we're very clear that we will get back to an adjusted EBITDA profit position. Uh, that's due to those revenue increases that I'm, I've talked about and also due to lower uh, minimum guarantee impact that, that we'll, we'll focus on uh, shortly. Um, one uh, item here, I think that, you know, I don't have too much detail on at this point, but we're, we're starting the process right now is the 2024 uh, upfronts, advertising upfronts. This is where we work with the key advertising agencies um, to uh, to commit spend for, for next year. Um, we're just starting that process now, but but those advertising agencies are, are confident about the state of the advertising market. They are confident that the brands that they represent and, and, and run advertising campaigns for uh, will have budget growth in 2024. So we like the, the look of the, the ad market. Um, we think there's going to be improvement there in, in 2024. And I think just to reiterate here is that, again, we, uh, we've we maintained that guidance for 2024, uh, a record revenue level. So we expect to get back to record revenue next year. $78.8 million is the number that we're focused on um, and adjusted EBITDA profit of, of $1.3 million. So uh, to sum that up, weak advertising market through to, to, to summer, uh, strong revenue growth then as our improvements come into play. And this is setting us up for a good Q4 and a, a record year in 2024. So you've heard me mention it uh, a bunch of times already, but those operational improvements, what are they? How will they affect, uh, how will they affect the business? I will talk through those in, in, the, in the next few slides because I think they are, are very much 
you know, very key to, to drawing that line that I mentioned of, of a challenging kind of past and a, and a very positive and, and bright future for, for this company. Uh, the first of those improvements is, is our network growth, how quickly and how strongly we are building our content network uh, at, at Audio Boom because uh, you know, the, the bigger and stronger we build that content network, uh, the more advertising inventory that we have to we have available to sell. Uh, and even in an ad market that, that isn't strong, uh, it allows us to take market share and it allows us to, to capture more of the advertising revenue that, that is available. So you'll see here, uh, we announced in the training update record monthly downloads uh, just under 127 million downloads a month, and we expect continued growth into Q4 and to get that number uh, around 130 million uh, downloads per month. So you'll see that the chart there, we've had uh, strong growth over the, the, the past four years as we bring in new shows into that network and build the, the size of, of our network. We now reach more than 36 million unique listeners every single month. So we have some real scale going through that network. And, uh, and that's proven here on the right hand side you'll see two rankers that's the edison research ranker uh, which which ranks the uh the, the reach the audience levels of, of podcast publishers in the us and on the far right hand side here you can see the triton digital podcast ranker and that one is uh is measuring um volume effectively how many downloads each of those podcast networks is is producing it every single month and audio boom has cemented its position as the fifth largest podcast publisher in the us um behind the likes of spotify and iHeartMedia, media uh, wondery amazon giants of the, the audio space so we continue to be very proud of, of that of that work and continue to be focused on uh, moving higher up that rank as we build out that that network I think it's also just worth saying that we rank fourth in Australia, fourth in Canada, second in New Zealand. There's no UK ranker, but if we did, we'd be in second or third place in the UK as well. So we have strong global scale, um, but really in that key US market, we continue to, to build the, the size of our network and, and to, to be that, that large publisher with good influence in, in the US. And connected to that network growth, and I think one real key point here is how that the growth of that network is leading for to us to have more inventory to to sell on a monthly basis. In October, we we hit a, a, a big milestone. This is a, a huge number for the podcast space. Uh, in October, we are making available more than one billion monthly ad impressions across the across the network. So again, talking about huge scale and strong growth, we now are creating a billion add impressions to sell versus 675 million a year ago. So um, you can see the growth, you can see the growth in the size of the network, and then you can see the growth in the number of ad impressions that we are generating. Um, we are have been very focused over this last year of, of extracting more advertising inventory from each download that we have. We now extract seven ad available ad impressions from every single download. A year ago, that number was five. So we are creating more to sell from the same number of downloads, but we're also lifting the number of downloads in the background too. And, and that has got us to that one billion number. Um, and we're doing that through signing new podcasts. These are just examples of some of the top tier shows that we've signed to the network just in, in Q3. Um, these are all uh, strong kind of top 200 podcasts in the US and, and globally. Uh, we expect these shows to contribute more than 8 million monthly downloads to the network to the network in, in 2024. Um, and we have a strong business pipeline uh, in, in place as well. So we have, uh, we've agreed terms uh, with a handful of, of other podcasts. We're just in the contracting phase on, on, on those. And the new shows that we have agreed terms on and we'll sign in Q4 will also deliver significant growth to that network in, in 2024. So um, we're building the network. Uh, as I'll show you on the latest slide, we're doing that on more favorable terms to, to Audio Boom, more equitable terms to Audio Boom. Um, and really what these two slides are about showing you is that you know, in, in the face of a, a weak advertising market, the improvements that we're making to the business will allow us to have more uh, more advertising inventory to sell and therefore more uh, revenue opportunity as we move forward. The second of those operational uh, improvements is about how we then sell all of that new advertising inventory. Um, we recognized pretty early on in this week uh, advertising market that, that we needed to 
create more supply and then we need to do a better job of, of, of selling against that supply as well. So what you'll see here on the left hand side is the work we've done to increase our brand count. These are the number of advertisers that spend money with Audio Boom on a monthly basis. Uh, the total brand count has increased by 40% um, over the, the, the last year. Um, and what's that what that is showing is that brands continue to understand that podcasting is a good place for them to be, a good place for them to spend their money. But in this week ad advertising market, they are spending less money. They have smaller budgets. They are committing lower budgets to the space, but they do want access to to uh, to podcasting. So that's a, a great platform to, 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 to build off. Uh, and our showcase marketplace has been a big part of, 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 of building that that platform of uh, of brands that, that we work with. Um, Showcase is uh, is our advertising marketplace. It's a product that we launched around uh, three years ago, and it's been a, a fast moving part of the business now contributes more than 20% of our revenue um, every single month. And effectively, um, what Showcase does is, is through our advertising technology stack that we have in the business, it connects uh, buyers and, and sellers uh, effectively of, uh, of advertising um, inventory at massive scale, fully automated. So on the supply side at Showcase, uh, we are putting around 675 million available ad impressions into Showcase from all of our podcasts, from our 8,000 podcasts and 130 million downloads. We push all of that into the marketplace and then um, we are bringing in demand monetization opportunity. So that's a programmatic ecosystem that, that we've, we, we, we've built for automated ad buying. Uh, we have international sales partners in Australia and Canada and New Zealand and India and other, other key territories for us. They can come into Showcase and they can buy uh, against our inventory uh, in Showcase. And then obviously our internal teams can also sell um, in, in, into Showcase as well, can bring monetization into Showcase. And that's led to 30% year over year year revenue growth for this part of the, the business. So we think showcase is a, a key area of, of focus for us. It's a, it's a key part of our business going forward, and it will lead to us optimizing um, you know, how we monetize that, that increased supply of advertising inventory that, that we have. Um, on that demand side, that, that one's key for me, just how we continue to bolster the monetization in, in Showcase in Q3. Uh, we entered into a handful of new partnerships. Uh, DAX US is a, a big uh, US audio brand. Uh, Amazon Ads in the UK, Bold Collective, you'll see them at, at the bottom there. These are all partnerships um, on the demand side. So those those companies come in, they access our inventory that's that's in Showcase, and they they bring uh, brands in to uh, to buy against that inventory, leading to uh, higher fill rates and higher demand um, on on Showcase, and uh, increase the, the the revenue coming in through that source. So Showcase is in a good place. That's one key uh, factor in in improving how we uh, how we monetize that advertising inventory. Uh, the second uh, key factor is is really expanding our customer base, and this is something uh, many of you will he have heard me talking about over the the last six months. While Showcase is growing, you can see this on the left hand side. Showcase is growing in terms of the number of brands that advertise through Showcase. Our premium product, those uh, host endorsements, those. Uh, those, those high priced advertising units where the host of the podcast is delivering the advertising message. The number of brands uh, that are spending in that area um, has lowered since the ad market downturn. And the key reason for that is that the majority of those brands that uh, that were utilizing the host endorsement and paying the premium prices to do so, those are what we call performance brands. Those are brands that directly measure the ROI of each ad and they build their businesses um, uh, via the sales that they get from that advertising. So brands you can see here like Simply Safe, BetterHelp, HelloFresh, they're disruptor brands, they're direct-to-consumer brands. Um, they advertise in podcasting, they like the host of, of, of the podcast delivering their messages the audience trusts that host the audience goes out and spends money on those products and they can they can track the roi now they've been hit harder by uh, the macroeconomic conditions uh, and they have pulled back on, on, on their spending so it became very kind of clear i think early to me that we needed to widen that customer base we needed to start to attract blue chip advertisers, those advertisers that are not advertising simply for immediate ROI, they are playing a longer game, they are building awareness of their brands, they are ensuring that when a customer wants to buy a new car, they first think of Ford motor cars. 
for example, or when they need to buy new sportswear, they are first thinking of, of, of Nike. So um, we want to attract those awareness brands. We're doing the, the work to get into the, the major agencies that work with those uh, awareness brands to build partner partnerships there. Earlier on this year, we launched the, the unit at Audio Boom um, that will, uh, will do this piece of work. Um, and we're making some some good traction at this point. Uh, we're a few months in um, right now, and we are already now working with six of the top fifteen agencies in the U.S. Uh, for, for for digital advertising spend. So you, you'll see some examples there at the bottom. But these are major uh, advertising agencies. They work with blue chip companies. Um, this is uh, this is about widening that customer base and, and doing work through these uh, through these major agencies. And it's a you know it's a uh, a slow process um and there's some good initial traction there and we'll continue to kind of build this and I, I think 2024 we'll see the um you know some some significant spend out of these agencies for 2023 we we do certainly have money coming in from 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 all of these uh all of these sources and we've made those initial contacts and we've made those uh, uh you know initial kind of test campaigns uh, are, are coming through um and I, i'm pretty pleased with how that's gone in in the first six months of of, of this year i think uh, uh, widening that that customer base and really um, you know making relationships and building the right relationships at those key advertising agencies um, is a, a sign of kind of maturation of this business um, and also just a, a good first step in in in, in, in taking um, this in, into a, a new uh, stronger and, and, and bigger place for audio boom. So just to recap, I've talked about the, the improvements that we've made to uh, build our network and to build our supply uh, of, of advertising inventory. Uh, I've also talked about how we then optimize the monetization of, of, of that supply. Um, and then I think the third point is uh, how we improve our work with talent so that this business becomes more profitable. Um, and there's two kind of key points here um, that, that I want to make. The first one is around those contracted revenue shares. So how much audio boom retains from every dollar of advertising spend. Um, in you know, uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, there was a lot of pressure on that revenue share. Um, talent agents, um, Hollywood talent agents like WME, UTA, CAA, they were beginning to uh, represent the top tier of podcast uh, talent out there. And they were using their leverage to strike stronger deals for the talent that put pressure on the revenue share. And as you'll see here on the chart on the left hand side, our revenue share across the business dropped to 21, 20, 20 percent in, in, in that time. Um, in a healthy ad market, of, of course, um, when we're meeting all of our minimum revenue, uh, minimum revenue guarantee obligations, that revenue share is, is a proxy for for gross margin in, in, in this business. Um, there was that pressure on the revenue share that I talked about, but now we are beginning to make uh, very clear improvements in that revenue share when we are uh, when we are making new signings to the network, when we are renewing with existing partners. Um, and I think the other key part is that we are now also um, being able to improve our revenue shares by offering um, deeper relationships with the talent. So we are now uh, offering them um, services like distribution, fur further distribution, production services, marketing services, all things that are unique to the audio boom platform, we are now able to offer as part of that package to the podcaster. And as part of that, we are able to negotiate a stronger revenue share. In 2023, that contracted revenue share is up to 24%. So you can see the work that we're doing already um, you know, making an impact. And in 2024, that, that contracted revenue share will, will be 25% um, or above. So I think the, the quality of the, the uh, creator deals that we're making is already improving, as you'll see here. And um, as revenue Im Im improves, that will, uh, that will uh, have a strong impact on both the gross margin and also our bottom line. The second part of these improved creator deals is our um, our exposure to minimum guarantees. As I said, we have uh, a number of uh, podcast partnerships uh, with the real top tier of, of podcasters that have a minimum revenue guarantee. If revenue is low and we are not hitting those numbers, we still have to have to pay that minimum guarantee and that hurts gross margin, that hurts EBITDA performance, clearly. Um, we have just, you know, in that that very buoyant podcast space uh, again in 2020, 2021, and two. Um, 
there was a lot of pressure to create strong minimum guarantees to sign podcasts to, to the network. Um, and there's since the, the advertising uh, market has uh, has weakened, um, we've obviously been exposed to those min minimum guarantees since the, then. But over the next few months, those minimum guarantees in those contracts that were signed at the height of the, the, the bubble uh, will drop away. Um, they will be renewed on more favorable terms to audio boom, or they will, will churn completely outside of, out of, of the business. So in the next few months, at the end of this, uh, at the end of this quarter, we see a significant drop in our exposure to minimum guarantees across 2024. Our exposure to those minimum guarantees will drop by around 75%. So that impact that we've had this year on our EBITDA uh, will, that will drop by 70%, 75%, I should say, over the next year. And then by January 2025, that minimum guarantee exposure will drop by 90%. So almost Almost all of the pressure that we've had uh, on our EBITDA number because of those minimum guarantee true ups uh, will fall away by the end of, of, of 2024 as we renew these contracts on, on more favorable terms. So those three items combined, you know, the, the increased uh, advertising inventory uh, and the, the strong scaling of, of the advertising inventory the uh, creation of better and stronger advertising products to optimize the revenue attached to that advertising inventory, and then the higher quality creator deals that we are making. That's standing us in great stead to go into a more positive place in Q4 to uh, get back to year-on-year -year growth in Q4 in terms of revenue and then to achieve record revenue uh, in 2024 and get back to EBITDA uh, positivity. And um, we'll break there and Brad will pick up now uh, to give you a more in-depth view on uh, the financials in the business. Great, thank you Stuart. Um, so yeah, we've got a um, usual couple of slides here which looks at revenue and cost and then we'll go on to our working capital and the, the cash update for the quarter. So firstly on uh, on revenue, we can see here that a uh, challenging Q3 quarter at 14 million. That is the lowest revenue quarter since the second quarter of 2021, however, our expectation is that we bounce back in Q4 of this year with a revenue quarter, which will be the highest since the second quarter of 2022 at the start of the downturn. And the $19 million, that will be 36% up on Q3 this year and 3% up on Q4 last year. So importantly, a return to growth. As Stuart said, 18 million is booked, 1 million to go before the end of the year to get through $19 million. Um, our markets continue to be challenging, but to reinforce what Stuart says, the operational work we have done and continue to do will allow us to recognise that increase in performance, and that should be viewed as a positive when viewing this company, is that we're able to drive a significant increase in performance, despite those softer macro conditions. Um, Showcase uh, you know, does perform really strongly this year. It has done for the last 18 months or so, Q3 ending 30% up year on year. Uh, a more challenging quarter for Sonic at 2.3 million. However, 50% of that revenue was in September and it continues to grow into Q4 where it will record a record quarter because of the material amount of spend um, in relation to the NFL season, the fantasy, sport, fantasy sports games around it. Um, as I've said uh, continually through these uh, investor presentations, our FX base uh, continues to be very well controlled. Uh, at 2.4 million in Q3, that was our lowest lowest OPEX quarter of the year, despite those wider inflationary pressures. And we've done very well in the current climate to lower our OPEX cost by 10%, reducing it from 8.8 .8 million for the first three quarters of last year to 7.9 million for the first three quarters of this year. Headcount, that stands at 38, and that's at the lowest level since October of 2021. Uh, total year-to-date salaries and commissions of 4.5 million. That's 1.2 million or 21% lower than the prior year. And of that 1.2 million, 0.7 million is due to lower salary costs and 0.5 million is due to lower commission due to the lower revenue recognised this year. Technology costs, including costs incurred for bandwidth and ad impressions, which is a material cost for us within that cost bracket. That's 25% up on the prior year at 2.2 million year to date, um, due to the higher volume of ad impressions and bandwidth this year. But the cost incurred is 9% lower than it 
uh, would have been through contract negotiations earlier on this year to lower the rates per gigabyte incurred. Um, with that headcount of 38, um, we remain an extremely lean business, prime for further growth, and we'll be able to recognize that growth in the final quarter this year and into next, following the improvements made this year to a very wide impressions, increasing the number and quality of content partners we work with, reducing that minimum guarantee exposure, which Stuart outlined just now, that's very important. Further optimization of these things will enable recognition of further growth next year. Um, as and when there are further uh, macro ad market improvements, that's obviously extremely difficult to forecast when those macro ad conditions will improve. We'll see that as an upside to our um, expectations and forecasts uh, for, 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 the, for the future. Um, when, but when that does happen, um, you know, the, 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 this company will continue to go from strength to strength because of that increased gearing effect on our top and bottom line because the OPEX base that we have is as optimized as it possibly could be. In terms of working capital, well, the headline for the working capital is that cash has decreased by 2.3 million in the quarter to 3 million. So let's go through the reasons as to why that happened. Firstly, as um, it has done historically over quarter end, um, customers, uh, we believe, did withhold cash over the quarter end to preserve their own cash reserves, at least half a million dollars should have been received in September and was indicated as such from a major customer, but, but that was withheld over the quarter end and was paid in the first week of October. So we have collected that, but just delayed on the receipt. Secondly, contracted to pay a million dollars in upfront recoupable advances in August, uh, which Stuart mentioned earlier. That's obviously had a direct impact on the cash held in the quarter. In addition, we made full payment of all creator minimum guarantees, including the onerous contract that was detailed in the half year report. Thirdly, July and August were softer revenue months, and that's impacted the cash held through softer collections in August and September. Um, many customers pay um, under 30 days now, especially in our uh, subsidiary Sonics, as um, relatively short turnaround in terms of the impact on cash. September collections of 3.5 million were lower than the year-to-date average of 5.3. On a year-to-date basis, we've collected 47.4 million, which is 104% to revenue booked versus our three-year average of 94%. So simplistically, outside of that delayed customer payment, we're approximately where we should be on collections and subsequently cash held. Year-to-date, bad debt, write-offs and provisions in the P&L total approximately $60,000, which is 50% of a half-year total due to good work on collecting previously provided for invoices. So that, um, that balance remains immaterial, as it has done historically as well. Uh, for cash, we are simply seeing the impact of lower revenue in the quarter, plus the impact of servicing minimum guarantee true ups this year. Uh, we've since collected another 2.3 million um, from our customers in October, having collected another $300,000 today. So that's an improvement on the 2 million that we went out with at 7 a.m. this morning. Um, so, due to the impressive, you know, the, the, the death days within the companies continue to be very impressive 67 days, as I say, many customers paying within 30 days. So we'll start to see the impact of the return to revenue growth through cash collections from this point onwards as we go through Q4. So as we've said, sequentially, revenues increase from from, uh, from August to September and then in, into October, collections for many customers being 30 days or less. We're going to start to see that cash coming through the business very shortly. We've, um, we still have our recently renewed overdraft, which Stuart mentioned earlier, as in uh, when we need it. What we need to happen now is our minimum guarantee exposure to reduce, which Stuart spoke to earlier. Um, it will start to happen from January 2024 onwards. We need the revenue projections to be met for that revenue growth to flow through the cash uh, cash collected. And we need our collections process to remain on point as we go forward into next year. And I'm confident in that process working because it's very efficient and has done for the last few years. Um, so hopefully that's given you a, a good update of revenue, OPEX, cash um, in terms of where we where we stand at the moment um, and I'll be back for back for the Q&A uh, at the end of today's session so back to you Stuart. Thank you Brad um, hopefully that has given you a good some good insight into uh, both uh, performance year to date in uh, 2023 and also really where we are focusing our uh, operational um, focus on uh, to, to to move back into a positive place at the end of this year and, and, and into next year. But uh, if you need any more detail on anything we've spoken about in the last few slides, um, put a question in now. There's still time to get questions in and we'll answer some of those um, towards the end of this. Uh, the next section, the next few slides um, are really about our business model. Uh, and this is uh, probably for anyone that's new to the business, uh, doesn't uh, 
doesn't fully um, know Audio Boom and the space that we operate in. So I'll walk you through that one, and then we'll get back to, to looking at 2024 um, and, and, and beyond uh, Audio Boom. So uh, I think this is you know a, a key one. Despite that uh, ad market downturn, um, the podcast industry is growing fast and is expected to continue to, to grow pretty quickly. Revenue through podcasting, and that's advertising, um, as well as other forms of, of monetization, uh, is expected to quadruple over the next seven years, moving from a $4 billion um, global revenue uh, business uh, industry, I should say, to $16 billion in, in, in 2030. So strong growth is, is projected for the podcast space that we operate in. Uh, we are a leading independent podcast company. We're a pure play podcast platform, uh, and we're well positioned to to maximize um, you know, our capture of, of that value over the, the next seven years. Our model is is kind of very simple. We have a technology platform uh, that sits at the heart of audience, advertisers, and creators, and connects uh, all three of those. So, uh, without Audio Boom sitting in in the middle of of, of that dynamic, uh, there really is no value to, to to capture. Audio Boom connects creators and content with advertisers uh, and distributes to 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 audience. And you need all three elements to to come together to to have that that value. And we do this at scale, um, and we do this in a, a very um, a very strong and and significant way and very successful way um, over the the past five or, or or six years. And over that, that time, we have delivered um, very strong growth through that model. Uh, we've delivered, uh, you know, average 65% uh, revenue growth uh, every single year since 2017. Um, and that model does work. And as you've seen here, we are now uh, enhancing and improving that model to take into account the, the weakened advertising market. Um, so we uh, I continue to, to focus on, on making that, that model work in podcasting. And we, we feel we have a very um, significant part to play in, in podcasting. Um, going forward. So three very kind of simple slides, I think, there on the audio boom model. We're part of a, a fast growing industry that's going to quadruple over the coming seven years. We play an important part in bringing creators, advertisers and audience together at scale through the platform. And the model works and has worked and will continue to work in the future as we amend and, and refine that in, in the face of a, a weaker advertising market. So just a handful of more slides before we get on to the Q&A section. Um, and, and these slides are really looking at where our focus is to, to build for the future. Um, I've touched on many of these points as, as we've gone through the presentation, but I wanna reiterate them because I really do believe that today is, uh, you know, that there's a line being drawn here, but between a, a kind of a challenging period for the business because of the macro um, and a very positive future for the business because of those improvements that, that we've been making here at Audio Boom. So, you know, first fo focus for us is to continue to grow that Audio Boom creator network. We know that the signings that we made in Q3 will add more than 8 million monthly downloads to the network um, in, in 2024. Um, but it's the Q4 signings that will add on top of that as well. So we have terms agreed with some top tier podcasts uh, that hopefully we'll be able to announce in, in, in the coming weeks that will add a further 5 million monthly downloads uh, to the network in, in 2024. So we're creating really good scale within that network. Uh, we have the strongest ever new business pipeline. Um, we uh, are continuing to work every day with you know key talent agents at CAA, WME, and UTA. They bring us great opportunities to partner with their talent, with their creators. We're doing that on more favorable terms to Audio Boom. Um, that's helping us to, to build uh, the size and the scale of our of our creator network as we go forward. And then point two here is really is the extraction of that that inventory from the, the downloads that we have. And, and that will continue to scale very fast. I think this milestone of one billion advertising impressions in, in October is a real significant point for us. Um, it's it's starting to 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 get some real scale through the network. Um, we are extracting more impressions per download uh, than we ever have been. That's you know the real operational uh, leverage that we have within this business to create more supply from each download. Um, and next year, and in Q4, in fact, and then again next year, we do expect to see both record audience reach and also uh, record download and inventory levels um, running through the platform. So size of the, the network will increase. The amount of inventory that we have to sell will increase because of that, that work we are doing. 
Um, Showcase, uh, we've talked about the success of Showcase and Brad touched on it too, that 30% year on year growth. We expect Showcase to grow um, above 20% again next year. We keep adding those demand side partnerships and we keep adding more inventory and more advertising supply into Showcase. Uh, and we, we, we believe that Showcase will be an important part of, of the business growing more than 20% in, in 2024. So not only are we creating more inventory, we are monetizing that inventory more effectively going forward. Um, we've talked about that the, 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 the uh, expansion of that customer base. That is clearly a key part of, of our focus right now. We launched our, a new team earlier in the year to focus on building partnerships and relationships with those blue chip customers. Uh, the ones I highlight, you know, some of the ones I highlighted earlier, like Ford Motor Cars, um, Nike, Procter and Gamble. These big uh, advertisers who are less impacted by macroeconomic conditions. That work is ongoing. Uh, I'm really pleased just last week that uh, Danny Farman joined Audio Boom to lead our brand sales as a vice president here in uh, here in the U.S. Uh, he's previously of uh, Sirius XM, a uh, huge uh, radio and audio business in, in in the U.S. And Danny will come in and, and lead some of those uh, those brand partnerships that that, that we have, um, and he will really drive that ad agency business going forward. Um, as I highlighted earlier, we're already just in the short space of time since launching this this part of Audio Boom. We're already working with six of the top. 15 digital advertising agencies in, in the US. Uh, the work that, that Danny and the team will do there will we'll develop that further and, and get us into uh, into more of those large advertising agencies and, and, and build campaigns through those relationships uh, even faster in, in 2024. Um, revenue share improvements is a key one. We talked about it uh, a little earlier and how we'd improve that revenue share that we have from around 20% uh, you know last year to to 24% this year through um, through more favorable contracts being able to uh, provide more services like distribution and marketing and production so that we can uh, can can um, hold on to a, a higher share of that advertising revenue in those talent contracts uh, we'll continue to, to do that and we will see further improvement in that revenue share uh, in, in 2024 uh, getting that to uh, to 25 percent and above so the quality of our partnerships will Im will improve significantly and then finally uh, as, as i mentioned before um, through those renewals through those re-signings and through new signings of, of podcasts we will reduce our exposure to those minimum guarantees that have impacted our uh, profitability over this past 18 months. So as I said before, across next year, those minimum guarantee true ups that we've been making will fall away by uh, around 75%. And then by the 1st of January 2025, so just over a year away, they will fall away by by 90% um, as we re-sign and renew uh, contracts on, on more favorable terms to, uh, to to audio boom. So less impact on, 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 that, um, on that minimum guarantee. And what does that mean? Well, that means two things. I think that means first thing is in, in Q4 of this year, uh, we will get back to year-on-year -year revenue growth. Q4 uh, will be at least $19 million of, 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 of revenue. Um, and I detail this here on this last slide. Um, just don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I just want to show you this last slide. All of these factors come together, the 20% network growth, the billion plus monthly advertising impressions, the growth and the continued growth of, of Showcase, that work we're doing with those blue chip customers, and then things like the seasonal demand that we get from the NFL and the, the, holi the, the holiday period, all of that comes together and that delivers $19 million of, of uh, Q4 revenue back to uh, year on year revenue growth, sequential quarterly revenue growth. Um, and of course, that you know what we are really focused on is at this point is 2024 um and those things coming together those improvements that we've made coming together will deliver record revenue in 2024 for audio boom of 78.8 million dollars on top of that revenue then we add in those improved revenue shares that we have we add in the decrease in uh in the minimum guarantee exposure uh and that that improves the EBITDA numbers. So we get back to uh, EBITDA profit in Q4 2023. Um, and then obviously we that focus on, on, on full year adjusted EBITDA, pro EBITDA profit in 2024 as a result of those, those improvements. So to recap and to, to, to um, you know, to, to, to leave this, uh, 
uh, today. I think we are ha we, we are kind of coming through and have had that challenging period for the business because of the ad market downturn. We recognized very early that we needed to put in a, a new strategy to improve the operations of, of, of the business in case the ad market did not uh, did not improve. Those uh, those those operational improvements are now coming through, and they will lead to a strong future for Audio Boom. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation this afternoon. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team take a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Um, Brad Stewart, as you did kindly mention at the start, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions ahead of today's event. And as you can see there in the Q&A tab, we've also received a number of questions throughout your presentation this afternoon as well. So thank you to all of those on the call for taking the time to submit their questions. And Stuart, Brad, if I may just hand back to you just to read out those questions and give your responses where it's appropriate to do so. And then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jake. Um, I think first question here, I'll pick up uh, from Jack C, who says, uh, how many podcast renew renewals do you have in the next year and how significant are these? Um, yeah, so I think that we have a, a podcast network of 8,000 podcasts. So we are continually and constantly renewing um, renewing uh, contracts with our, our podcasters. But really, I think the focus on this question is is on the, the key ones there. Um, next year, I, um, I will pinpoint four um, key podcast renewals. And, and when I talk about those, those are shows that are worth more than $1 million in, in our annual revenue. That would be a, a key um, renewal for us. So uh, we have three of those pretty early on in uh, in 2024, in the first month of, of 2024, and then one that is uh, around halfway through the year. We are already in negotiations uh, with the with those three um, that, uh, that renew in the first part of, of, of 2024, and we're in a positive place with those renewals. Uh, we do expect um, to uh, to renew the majority of those key renewals. We have a great track record in, in renewing um, uh, uh, partnerships with our, our key podcasts. So yeah, we do expect to uh, move into 2024 and, uh, either with, with two or three of those uh, renewals already wrapped up and signed, or at least uh, you know a, a good way through a positive negotiation with those shows. Um, second question here, well, two kind of similar questions. Um, one came in from John Batani, uh, and a similar one uh, just came in in the Q&A. There's no name attached to it. But um, one says, uh, how is the advertising market right now? And the other question says, um, are, are you being overly optimistic by calling uh, July the, the bottom of the advertising market? I think we, we did kind of cover much of this in the presentation, but certainly worth a few more thoughts. Um, the market is, you know, remains very weak when compared to, to 2021 and the first half of, of 2022. Um, that that July low point was because of some very unexpected, I think, uh, early summer softness. Although there's there's more seasonality right now coming in Q4, which has has good demand. Um, I think July, yes, we are right to kind of call that that the bottom. Um, we are seeing small improvements since then, but really we are, we are not seeing major improvements at this point in, in the advertising market. Um, we are really operating now as if uh, the current state of the ad market is the new normal. And so what we have been focused on I guess for almost a year now is improving that business model is improving the operations and processes within the confines of, of that new normal so the ad market is weak it's continuing at, at that, this level um i've talked about all the, the the strategy for improving the operations you know while the ad market is, is weak and i think that this work kind of means we can um successfully move back to growth and profitability even within this current ad market, right? And then if the ad market does show improvement uh, and, and does get better in the next year, um, then we have even further upside to the, the numbers that we're talking about in, in 2024. So key for me was to you know start to treat this ad market as the new normal, improve within that so that we are perfectly placed to, uh, to, to both get back to, to growth, but also capture that upside if there, if there is improvement. Uh, thank you for those questions on the ad market. Um, 
Brad, I'll uh, I'll throw this one over to you. This one came in um, on the platform ahead of the presentation, but it says, um, can you give more details about the onerous contract that was announced in the last company update in July? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so as you say, we went through this um, in detail the half year. Um, if you want to see that detailed explanation, we've got a link to the July presentation on our PLC website. We've also got the half year report as well that was published but in summary the onerous contract provision that was created at the end of june was for one individual contract with a material minimum guarantee um, that was signed when the podcast industry was very buoyant in the first part of 2022 the the terms that were agreed at that point um, were above the ad rates that can be demanded right now in this software ad market and the contract was incurring a loss so in line with accounting standards, a, pro a provision was, was prudently made for the future loss as at the end of June. And that contract ends in July 2025. So from July 2023 to July 2025, any loss incurred on that specific contract will be unwound against the provision. We've included that um, below adjusted EBITDA in order to distinguish between this contract and the rest of the business. At the half year, a $7 million provision was created. Um, and at the full year, as again, December, this will be approximately 5 million as losses incurred from July to December will unwind against that provision. Um, as with any provision, we'll perform an assessment for the reasonableness of it um, by assessing a range of future growth scenarios on that contract. And we'll provide a provision update once we have completed the um, audit next year. Um, if anyone needs any more information on that or wants to go through it, specifically brad at audioboom.com, um, please email me and we can we can go through it in detail then. Okay, thank you, Brad. Uh, I think we have time for a couple more. Uh, these two are connected. The first one says, um, given the challenging year you have had, is the company fairly valued right now? Um, I mean, no, no, it's undervalued. Um, you know, the share price is, is at the same level as when this management team took over the business four years ago. Uh, at that time, the revenue was $11 million. Um, but we've incre increased revenue more than six times since then. We've reduced costs significantly. We have a clear strategy. Um, we've increased our market share. Uh, we've, we've executed on that, that, that strategy. And while you know, the recent period has been more challenging, I think this business is in a completely different place than it was four years ago when when it had the same value. So so it is undervalued today, right? And I think the other thing that we're seeing now is is there are more comps to to, to make here. Um, there are now two other podcast businesses that are publicly traded, Acast and, and, and Podcast One. So much easier to, to kind of make that comparison. Podcast One um, is on NASDAQ in the US. Uh, Acast is on NASDAQ Nord. Um, both of those are trading somewhere around the one and a half X revenue multiple. So look, while it's clear, I think in this market, public valuations are, are not strong for podcast businesses right right now versus you know some of the the M and A transactions of of twenty twenty one and twenty twenty where they, they you know these transactions were happening at a four to six times revenue multiple, um, and the, you know the public markets are, 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 are valuing podcast one and Acast at you know a one and a half times revenue multiple. Um, what it is clear is that the audio boom is significantly undervalued against Acast and, 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 and Podcast One, um, you know, uh, at our current valuation metric. So yeah, you know, we, we are undervalued. Um, you know, we need to get back obviously to uh, to revenue growth, to, to EBITDA um, positivity again, um, and, and and show why this company is, is, is so undervalued. But yes, today against, um, when you compare to, to where we were four years ago, and we compare to, to competitor businesses, uh, we are, are certainly undervalued. And I think we've got one minute left. So just this last question is, is somewhat linked. Um, it says, you have mentioned uh, listing in the US, but we have not heard anything since. Is there any talk if this will still happen? And if so, when? Um, you know, we get this question almost every time we, we, we do these presentations about listing in the US. And so I have talked about it recently in here, but I, I do want to be clear that we've uh, we haven't stated, we have not stated that we are actively pursuing a US listing. Um, rather, uh, you know, I talked about that we are 
rightly doing our work to understand it, to understand the processes, the logistics of it, and to also understand the the, the value proposition of a, a US listing. Um, if I go back to that last question, I think you know it's worth highlighting the the podcast one Nasdaq listing since they since they listed in in early September, um, their market cap has dropped around seventy five percent. So. You know, as I said, they're, they're still valued more positively than, than, than we are. Um, but it does highlight, I think, that it, it's just it's not a given um, that a U.S. listing would deliver more value um, than AIM does right now in, in, in this market. So it's, it's something we'll continue to evaluate, um, particularly, I think, you know, in relation to the, the wider sentiment and the macroeconomic environment, um, because uh, that is really going to dictate uh, the, the, the value attached to, to, to that maneuver. Um, and I think we are pretty much out of time here. So um, obviously, as Brad said, you can be in touch with any uh, further questions you have, but I'll throw it back to you, Jake, to wrap up. Perfect, Stuart, Brad. Thank you very much indeed for addressing all of those questions that came in uh, from investors this afternoon. And of course, we'll be able to give you back any further questions that do come through immediately after the presentation has ended, uh, just for you to review to then add any additional responses, of course, where it's appropriate to do so. And we'll publish all those responses out on the platform. Um, but Stuart, perhaps before really just looking to redirect those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please just ask you just for a few closing comments to wrap up with, that'd be great. Thanks, Jake. Yes, look, I think we recognize the, the challenging environment that we've been operating in. Uh, I think what I've tried to get across to you t t today, and I hope you'll understand, is that we have been very much focused in this time on improving the model, of improving our, our, our operations, so that even if this ad market doesn't improve, uh, we are best placed to, to continue to grow and to, to continue to, to go forward. Uh, the podcast space uh, is, is going to quadruple in size over the, the next seven years. We're perfectly positioned to, to be a big part of, of, of that growth. Uh, we will get back to, 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 to growth again in Q4. We will get back to EBITDA positivity again in Q4. And I think 2024 is, is going to be very bright for, for audio boom uh, in terms of record revenue and EBITDA too. So um, thank you uh, for, for all of you, your support, I think, during this this, this challenging time. Uh, we've tried to be, I think, as, as open and transparent as, as, as possible. Um, and I think that goes, uh, you know, that goes along with the, the future um, statements that we're making here and, and, and our positivity around uh, the, the future of this business. Stuart, that's great. And thank you once again for updating investors this afternoon. Um, could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Audio Boom Group PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good afternoon to you all.